If for any reason the power integrations device does not receive feedback for longer than the auto restart on time, the device will enter auto restart protection mode. This will always happen when the feedback loop is open. First check that there is no debris on the back of the board which may be shorting out a feedback component such as the optocoupler LED. Also, check that there are no cold solder joints in your feedback circuit by touching up each connection with a little extra solder. Cold solder joints often appear as normal connections, but provide intermittent connectivity at best. If your design uses a secondary side feedback circuit, then verify that the feedback components installed are as specified by PI Expert. Feeding back too little current to the power integrations device will cause the device to enter auto restart mode. This can happen when the opto series resistor value is too high, or in Zener based feedback circuits if the Zener voltage is too high. Finally, if using an LM431 reference IC, a disconnected upper sense resistor can also cause the device to enter auto restart. If your design uses a primary side feedback circuit instead of a secondary side circuit, then verify that the values of the resistors in the voltage divider match those specified by PI Expert. Next, verify that all output diodes are either ultra-fast or Schottky types. Power Integrations devices implement a leading edge blanking feature which disables the current limit for a fixed period immediately following MOSFET turn on. This prevents the initial current spike from triggering the current limit and prematurely terminating the switching cycle. However, if the turn-on spike is larger than normal, it can still trigger the initial current limit of the device and cause it to limit power transfer to the output. Using slow recovery diodes on the output windings will increase reverse recovery current. This current flows backwards into the secondary winding, is transformed through the turns ratio back to the primary, and increases the initial turn-on spike seen by the MOSFET. This may trigger initial current limit decreasing power delivery and preventing the supply from reaching regulation. Visually inspect all output diodes to ensure that a fast or standard recovery diode has not been used. If a wrong type has been fitted, replace it with either an ultra fast or a shot key and retest. A bias winding diode with a long reverse recovery time can cause a similar problem, though this is less common when a series resistor is used in the circuit. If a slow recovery diode is used in your design, try replacing it with a 1N4937 rectifier. If this solves the problem, then refer to PI Expert to verify that the bias winding diode you've used matches the specifications given. If it doesn't, then replace your bias winding diode with the one recommended by PI Expert. Excessive capacitance on the drain node can also cause large turn on current spikes. This capacitance can come from transformer winding capacitance or large RC snubbers across the device MOSFET or transformer primary winding. To verify if capacitance is causing a problem, we'll need to monitor the drain's switching voltage and current. First, turn off and disconnect the AC input and discharge the input capacitor. Break the MOSFET drain trace on your board and insert a wire current loop to monitor drain current. Be sure to make this break between the drain pin of the power integrations device and any clamp components in your design. Measuring from other points along this trace will not allow you to properly diagnose all issues with your design. Connect a high voltage oscilloscope probe from the drain node to the source pins to measure the switching voltage across the MOSFET. Also connect the current probe on the current loop you just made. Now reconnect the AC input and set the input voltage to the maximum for your design. Configure your oscilloscope to view both the MOSFET voltage and current and set it to normal trigger mode. Trigger on the rising edge of the MOSFET voltage to ensure stable readings. Study the data sheet for your power integrations device to determine the leading edge blanking time in your design and the initial current limit at the end of leading edge blanking. Then measure the current level you see through the MOSFET after the leading edge blanking time. Compare this value with the initial current limit in the data sheet. If the value you measure is greater than the initial current limit, then you will see an extremely brief current pulse terminated at the end of leading edge blanking time. This can cause power delivery problems. Disconnect all primary side snubbers from your circuit and remeasure the initial current after leading edge blanking. If this solves the problem and the initial current spike decreases to acceptable levels, you'll need to decrease the capacitance of your primary snubber circuits. 
If the problem remains, then you'll need to verify that the transformer winding capacitance is not too large. If using a top switch device, verify that the return, the zero volt end, of the transformer bias winding is connected to the primary side return. This is the negative terminal of the input capacitor. If the transformer bias winding is left floating, the optocoupler has no supply voltage and therefore no feedback signal can be provided to the power integrations device, causing the device to enter auto restart mode. If your board is still not reaching regulation, the last thing to check is the polarity of your transformer windings. If one has been reversed, that winding will appear as a forward winding. This prevents the power supply from operating as a flyback converter, limiting power transferred to the output. Here we see the voltage and current waveforms from the drain of the MOSFET of an RD91 board. On the left side are the waveforms of a correctly operating flyback supply and on the right are the ones seen when the secondary winding is reversed on that same supply. With the time base of both waveforms set to 20 microseconds per division, we see that the reversed winding current pulses are much shorter than the normal transformer. Expanding in, we measure the MOSFET on time of the normal pulse to be approximately 4 microseconds, while the reversed winding transformer pulse is only 400 nanoseconds. If you see a similarly shortened on time in your design, then it's likely one of your transformer windings has been reversed. Thank you for attending the course, Fixing a Flyback Supply, where the output fails to reach regulation. If you have any additional comments or questions, please email piuniversity at powerant.com.